Well, it's quite unusual for us to come to you on this evening, especially being Sunday night. It's Sunday night here in Israel about nine o'clock. There's been some very interesting things that are flying through the news. So I've asked Julian to join me as we share some of those news tips that may have us concerned. As I stated to you a little bit earlier that caused me to want to jump on here and inform people is that we hear from all forms of news media everywhere, especially foreign, but they're not inside like we are currently. And people have been asking me if a way of escape was possible, would we take it? And I know we briefly mentioned this when I told you what we were going to talk about tonight. What do you think the general feeling would be for most people that if they knew they could get out of here, out of this war zone, that they would take it? Do you think they would run and do everything within their power to get to the location? I would think so. I mean, as far as, you know, people don't want to be in actually in a war place. So that, you know, if it was a way available, I would think they would take it. Now, one, one thing that I had noticed was when the first few hours of this war, that there were flights out of here. I don't know where the destination was, but I know that some of them started at $2,000 a ticket. Now, of course, restrictions were put on baggage or anything of that nature. And again, we were not told the destination. And that was the average cost about a week ago. Since then, we've had a lot of things that have taken place that have really brought my attention to some very troubling information. As I spoke to you earlier, a few hours ago, I received a notice from my friend about something that the U.S. Embassy was doing and saying about the American citizens. And so my trusty assistant is going to pull that little letter up to kind of show you that this came. And I know. Uh, and the Tel Aviv section just within the last two hours has been like this. would take us then through and up into Haffa. Now the journey itself is approximately two hours at best if you can in fact have no issues on getting to those locations. But we do know that transportation is extremely limited. So we received this from the U.S. Embassy telling us they got a spot open to take one piece of luggage and obviously Now, when you get to the ship, you have to sign another waiver, again stating that you're taking this trip at your own risk. I don't know about you, but I'm 68 years old and I'm in a wheelchair par partially. My granddaughter, Joy, is, is um, difficulty walking and we're not guaranteed that there's not destruction on those roads or that when we get to each step of that, that we can make an easy transfer. And let me go into a little bit more detail and you can see why this is troubling to me. 
So they want us to risk our life and leave from the area we're at. Now, since we're in Jerusalem, and I stated what our, our journey would curtail or involved, you could see we would go through major bombing area in Tel Aviv, and then you would be going up to Haffa, and Haffa, your way to Haffa and you know that a lot of the area has already been bombed and are still subject to be bombed any second and you're going to go get on a boat now my question to you would be and think about this Julian if I've got to go through all of these obstacles in order to get to a ship and I have to sign a waiver saying that I won't hold or my family won't hold you responsible if the ship is bombed that's kind of like playing the odds against you wouldn't you think i mean it is because i mean if, if they're making an, an escape route i would think they will try to find the best area or best route to take as far as where you won't be in danger or you know you know obviously there's gonna be danger danger everywhere you go right right now but i'm saying i'm sure they could find the best route they take as far as getting you to the ship but as it is right now obviously you're showing the app what is showing on the app that they're taken through to points where it's actually there's a lot of danger there. So yeah, where it's being way, bombed, where right? it's currently being bombed. So they're taking you right into the bombing zone so that you could be another casualty. I have a problem with that. It made me wonder if the left hand knew what the right hand was doing. Did the embassy even conduct or talk to those involved? Now, today in Tel Aviv, we had a dignitary, Chuck Schumer, who came and while he was in Tel Aviv himself, was in the, the three Hebrew children. That's too great of a risk. Now, the thing that's going on are these politicians are playing games with everybody's life. Now, I had shared with you, and I didn't get this up on the screen, but um, I want to give you the title. And it's called, and by CNBC, There is Nowhere to Hide from the Bombs. Civilians trapped in Gaza can't escape Israel's siege. Now, let me give you some information here. Israel is surrounded by Palestinians, Islam. And the countries outside of Israel are those countries that support the Palestinians. But what happened when they told everybody to go out of Gaza and prepare for the explosions they went and put huge concrete blockades to prevent the people from Gaza to coming into their country. Now, this is their own people, Palestinians trying to get to the Palestinian state of Egypt. And they put up these concrete barriers and tell them, you can't come in because we're concerned about the effect it's going to have on our economy. So if anyone is watching can put up that link to that article that would be great if not then we'll try to put it in the description on here but my point is if the palestinians were so concerned about their people why haven't they been proactive in getting them out of the war zone instead of just telling them to sit there like setting ducks it's as if the whole politic the whole politics scenario really doesn't care about citizens where they live their age what category they're in, we are all becoming pawns for their major military attack. 
That to me is an atrocity within itself. I made mention on yesterday's broadcast about these teenagers being at this party. They weren't clothed in military regalia. They were just out in the desert. And we have this, these young people being attacked, but then the mothers and grandmothers and people in an old folks home, a senior citizen's home was being attacked in there. And everything is being pushed at Israel. Well, I have a question for you, Julian. If the Palestinians were so concerned about their living conditions, which is one of their major gripes, why did they not do anything to improve their infrastructure in the last 15 years? Right. And also, I mean, you would think that if they were against what the this terrorists did, I mean, what they were doing, what they were going to do, why would they house them in their houses? I mean, why would they give them shelter and all that for them to actually launch a rockets from there? And so was, some of the stuff, it doesn't really make sense as far as what they're saying. But one thing that I guess we can, we have to understand is that there's going to be casualties in both, both sides of the field. And, you know, we, the citizens, we have nothing to do with that because, I mean, we're not involved in the decisions that we made by the, by the military complex. So there's going to be casualties anywhere you go. But one thing I'm seeing right here in the States is that everything is geared towards the casualties in Israel, but no, nothing about the casualties this time, which I mean, there's going to be casualties everywhere. Anywhere you go, I mean, this is war, so it's going to be cash. And to me, I think that they're not covering as far as both sides, they're just covering one side which again, we're not. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that you know what what the Palestinians did was right, but that was wrong, totally wrong, as far as because that was an atrocity. But as it is right now, they're not covering both sides of the of the field as far as what's going on, you know, because as as they were saying on the, in this report that they had cut off, you know, Israel had cut off the supply for you know the water supply, electricity, food supply, and all that, which according to the Geneva Conventions, that's a war crime. But they're not saying anything about this, you know, they're not really bringing it up. Then that's where actually, I mean, according to the rules of war, it, it's a war crime. And, and that's not the only thing, okay? Hamas told the Gazan people, citizens too, that the Israelis trying to give them the opportunity to get out were lying to them, that they right. were not going to have this attack. We also had received notice that there was not going to be any warfare for about a week. Now, I'm not sure what the outside sources are hearing, but our inside sources are saying nothing stopped. Yes, we had a little rain today, a little bad weather, but if bad weather was the thing that would stop a war and an attack, you'd think we'd pray for big rains and this type of thing. The other thing that I want to say is, as I received just now a notification that says Hamas says it has introduced a new weapon called Y-A-S-S-I-N and it is a 105 millimeter anti-armor shell. So we have Hamas coming at Gaza with weaponry that will annihilate a large portion of society. And I don't see the Palestinians gathering up the Gazans and saying, you know, we're just going to put a barrier up here. Nobody go past this area because of the citizens. And the other thing that got to me, there are countries all over the world have found out how to take ocean water, sea water, you know, any body of water and bring it through a filtration system in order to provide water. As much money as the United States has given these countries, explain to me why they have never worked on getting a filtration system for water so water being cut off would not have been an issue it would be readily available but as we see it is appearing that the only thing the palestinian groups want to do is wipe israel off the plate the face of the planet and they don't care how they do it even if it costs them their own because they are taught from the beginning in youth that to kill a jew is a wonderful thing it's the greatest martyr and even schools and streets etc are named after them if they do this and they're trained from the time they enter an education system 
Now, that's a lot of mental programming. I've been giving little clips out my window to kind of see the area of what's going on. And we do see that people are going for groceries and a few necessities, but it's not been anywhere like it was a little over a week ago with the great jubilation happening and this special time of, of celebration. Everyone is pretty much laying low and staying to themselves. I am going to ask you to please, as we come forth, what information we can possibly give out to you, please share it with everyone. We are on the inside receiving special bulletins and news from the inside, not from reporters on the outside trying to skew the opinion of the society and the world to, I guess, back up as many enemies as it can. The one thing we really must keep in mind, God gave this land to Abraham. And Abraham was given this as a divine promise. Now I grant you, not everyone who is Jewish has done right according to Hashem Adonai. They have not. Not everyone has lived accordingly. But I'm gonna say this kind of as a recap, neither have any of the Christians really lived what they were taught according to Jesus. Many of the other, the Catholic and the other groups have not done what they were taught according to their scriptures. We have totally just picked and chose what we want to observe. Now I'm in the process of preparing the series about no other gods. We need to understand that God does not play games and he will not tolerate indignant behavior toward him. And we must honor him. As I said, not everyone who says they are a Jew abides by the scripture. Not every rabbi is sincere. Not everyone who has that position got it by their life example. But we're living in very perilous times. And as I told my friend, we will not be making any escape, especially being given this information. I feel very secure in my heart and in my mind that when God wants us to move, we will. I know that Julian, you have your family members over here with me. And I do want to say just to share with the people how you have felt knowing that your wife, your daughter, and your sister-in-law are over here in the battle zone standing by me. I'm not I'm not worried about it because I mean as far as we made a decision a long time ago that you know we were going to stand by this ministry whatever happens so i mean when it's time to go it's your time to go so it doesn't matter where you are or you know what happens i mean it's it's your time so we have accepted this from day one so i'm not worried about it i mean as far as i know it's a it's a dangerous situation that's going on but as far as y'all safety i'm not Again, we trust in that if that's his will for whatever happens, that's that's going to be his will to happen. So I'm I'm good with that. You know, like I said, we made the decision. And one of the things I did want to say too that you know there's a lot of protests being here on different on the different states, different cities, and Dallas being one of them here. They're coming out protesting and they're 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 giving their support. And I think to me that's 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 bad. I mean, it's especially at this time because obviously the whole instigation was. I mean, it was the Hamas that started the whole thing. The Hamas started the whole thing as far as the, what they did. It was atrocious. I mean, it's it's that's if there's a definition the definition of terrorism, that's what it is right there. When you have no when you kill in cold blood like that, children, you know, and like you know, with no. Those children didn't have a military uniform on, and neither did the aged. You know, the thing that I want you to understand is I am totally against brutality, barbarianism, terrorism, and all of this. And what has happened is 
this group of people who were dissatisfied with what was going on in this country, feeling like it was a two party system and there was not any fair uh, representation, I can understand that there would be legitimate complaints. But my problem is when we're going to take it into our own hands and merely come in and terrorize and be brutal to family members, what would a person, I'm 68 years old, I am not capable of carrying a weapon or, or fighting. What would a person in a wheelchair, what threat do they present? What does a baby or a toddler, what threat do they present? What threat? So you feel like that to kill all people, not just Jewish, not just Israelis, but all of the citizens that are here for one reason or another, you're gonna take it upon yourself to be our judge and our executioner? How dare you think you should have that liberty? If you had legitimate complaints, you needed to go straight to the people that were in control. And if they wouldn't hear you, then you should take it another step. But to attack a region or a people without any cause, all you're proving is how horrid and how demonically possessed you really are. Julian, you work for a company that is owned by a Jewish family. Has there been anything on your job that's been pro-Palestinians with the Jewish company, or has there just been neutrality all the way across? Just neutrality. I mean, nobody's said anything about it. But like I was, like I was saying, when it cut off, I mean, it's like, to me, how could you come on the streets right now and, and give your support to Palestine when, you know, Hamas started the whole thing, like I was saying, and it's, it's atrocious how they, you know, like say, like I was saying, you know, the whole thing about terrorism, this what is defined as terrorism right there. When you actually have in cold blood go out there and kill people like that, that's, that, it's totally unacceptable. And it's, for people to come out, like I said, you know, be on the streets right now in Dallas and, you know, be protesting that, you know, that they're for Palestine and all that, that's, that's uncalled for. What I think is funny is that they're definitely not in tune with what's actually happening. Right. And the reason I say that is they've done different interviews with people asking who the vice president is, and they don't even know. In Texas, where we live, there's thousands of immigrants coming across the border completely illegally and creating a terroristic situation in Texas. And yet they don't even know that. It would seem like to me that we would focus on our problems at home. Our country sends a vast amount of money over to the Palestinians because they want their drugs, they want the oil, they have financial opportunities to use people. It's not about morality. It's not about decency and respect for mankind. It's downright property of what they can gain, but yet we have trillions of dollars that we are in debt for sending out to all of these countries. And we're sitting there in the United States struggling financially, but we can get out in the streets and protest something that isn't even at home. It does affect home, but why aren't we going to your politicians? Oh, let me guess, you're too busy on your phone with your social media trying to put out a bunch of lies. My purpose for coming on here tonight and probably subsequently days after is to inform you that's not what's happening. There are very good people on both sides, Palestinians, Jewish, and other countries that are represented here. They're very good people. These are not your mass murderers and your thieves and the people that's come to this country for their vacation in order to have a connection with God. They didn't expect to have an entrapment where they can't go back to their other countries. Right. And what these people who are protesting should be doing is providing a financial means for those of us who are stranded here, running out of money, needing funds, setting up a GoFundMe page. They should be doing something of that nature instead of going out and causing more chaos in the street and trying to ignite some kind of response. We made an obligation as 
of people in the United States that we would be Israel's ally. From I heard from my nephew last night, and he was saying that for he's at, they have heard some positive things. It's not universal. You know, you have London uh, rioting, you've got it happening all over the place. It's like, why don't they get on their face before God and begin to bombard heaven for this thing to be straightened up unless they really don't believe in God? And that's what I think is happening here. We have a good versus evil. And when people go to the point of being wicked and laughing at these situations, it's horrific. I've got my assistants here. Both of them are beside me. You can't see them, but we've been sharing several things that they have read when I'm busy in study and preparation. Is there something, girls, that you want to bring forward and, and say about what's happening? I, th I think that because of the mainstream media, people, they get one side of the story. And I, I do believe it's all human lives matter, you know, it's not one against the other because both sides have done atrocities. And if people just stay tuned and click in, we can tell you we're here, we're live, and we can tell you what's going on and what's happening. And I think that would help instead of getting like second, third, fourth, people just re, uh, reposting the same news of the same people of the same, mm -hmm. and that's not all the news that's happening. They don't want you to know what's happening actually over here. And I think we do have an advantage, although we're not going out in Jerusalem from place to place to interview people. We are seeing from our resources, like I said, there's a network that's inside of Israel that's informing us what's going on. That's where we have heard about some of the newest weaponry in which Israel has. And then I just read the part about what Hamas has. There's not going to be an end to this anytime soon. Right. Trying to get the United Nations to agree well, where were they when this thing started off years ago? This Palestinian area has been in operation for 15 years. Where has the United Nations been except playing their politics and patting each other's pocketbook? There's not one degree of humanity in these wicked people. And you're going to tell them how to run their war? And you're going to tell them how to live? I know personally what it's like to have somebody murdered. And I know the anger that is attached to that. And I've said it many a many time. Yes, one day my vengeance will come and I'm not gonna worry about a thing of the consequence. You see, when somebody deliberately murders your loved one and the hole that is in your heart from the atrocity and the visual sign of the murder scene, how could you ever, ever think this was okay unless you're that demonically possessed in your mind and have no degree of empathy sympathy or relation to humanity that's where you better step back and ask yourself where did you become so desensitized to this kind of a horrible monstrosity where did you lose your ability to care about people you have gotten so vicious in your attacks social media on the road rampage. Let me tell you from personal experience, each person I judge individually, and yes, I said I judge. You better start evaluating people for what they do, not what they say. What they do follows through with their comment. I have met people or seen people here and in other places in Mexico, United States, who were rude, downright arrogant. But that doesn't mean all society is that way. It means that individual is lacking any compassion, which tells me their mind has been so warped, whether it's drugs and alcohol and, and illicit behavior, they have totally lost the purpose and goal of God. And I want to bring this in to me, for you to shake your fist at God, you are a demon because God never brought this. Your mentality of destruction brought this. And that tells me you serve Satan, the devil, the antichrist. Everything that is evil is what you serve. So I turn deaf ears to your ignorance. You have no idea. 
I looked out my window today and there was a CBS, I believe it was, news station that was on the street. At least that was what report I was given. I can't verify that. But the point I'm getting at, I saw them with a commentator, but they weren't asking anybody going by what was their opinion about what was going on. Think about it. Why would you bring one of your reporters to stand in the street of, of Jerusalem to get a commentary when you've got Jewish, not just Jewish, you have all citizenry walking up and down and going from one place to another to get food or get into another location that's safe? Why would you ask somebody who's not in there what their opinion is? It's going to be skewed. The people here in Israel, as a nation, are resilient. They honestly believe that God gave them this land. And knowing that, they will fight to the death. Let me bring your memory back to an incident that happened in the temple. Whenever they came into the second temple to overthrow it, stories say, that the Jewish people ran in to protect the temple, the place of worship. And they knew with their last dying breath, they would defend it. To me, that's heroism. That's being a hero. You're determined you're going to fight for what you believe in. Now, as I said, this whole thing coming about was wrong, dead wrong. But you have to think about the mentality that's spinning behind these leaders. They want global world war. Withholding nothing, they want to eliminate all of the goodness that there is on this earth. Let me admonish you, don't give up your faith in God. Don't throw in the towel. He is not going to leave us forsaken and forgotten. Don't throw in the towel and submit yourselves to the evil of this world. Don't do that. Keep your dignity, your integrity with God and stand firm for him. Don't give over to the ways of this world and involve yourself in the, the careless behavior. How is that benefiting anyone? How is that benefiting you? As I stated, there is ways that you can help. No, getting out on the street and protesting in a country that really is not going to listen to you anyway. I mean, it's, it's horrible that right now our dear beloved president is not even in his right mind. And what a presently wonderful time for the world to take advantage. I think that the Democratic Party was unjust by letting him become a mocking, laughing stock. To me, that showed the greatest disrespect and hatred when it's emphasized him falling or his conversation being non-understandable. How could we, as a nation, make a mockery? Why can't we step aside and bring our president aside and, and talk with him and tell them that, because of his health and his concern for that, that you do not want him to be in that pressurized situation where he can make a mockery of our country. And I will go another step further. That includes Congress, the Senate, the U.S. House of Representatives. All they are in there for is money. They make these private deals behind the scene. And you don't know about it, and they will never prosecute them. It's not American, Democrat versus Republic versus Independent. Can we not stand this humanity that loves and trusts God? Were we just so thrilled with all the demonic mess that we can throw out and how we glover in it and, and we put people in our eyes that are nothing but representatives of evil? I'm calling you today to bring forth the righteous the love of God, if you're going to protest, be on your knees and tell the people you don't want to hear it. Put a block up. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear what you have to say. Why don't we follow through with our prayer? 
We did take an oath a number of years ago, and we said we were together to the end, ride or die. And we have stayed true to that because we knew the purpose of God and we knew the calling of God and what he designed and what he wanted. I know, Julian, I didn't give you much of a notice that we were going to do this. But before I close, I really want you to express anything else that you would like to involving this and world events. Earlier I was watching a video and this is probably one of the few videos I've ever seen that when the guy was actually talking about a spiritual war that's going on, he was saying that what, what you brought up earlier, they said that any, anybody that does these kind of things is straight up demon possessed. And to me, when I heard that, it was like something I, you know, really nobody wants to bring that up, that we all fight a spiritual war and this is spiritual, I mean, this is not... You can, you can't fight on your own, obviously. You we, we need God more than ever, and you know, and like you're bringing up, you know, we have to get a hold of God as we never did before, and we need to stay stay strong because this is a spiritual battle. Whether you want to accept it or not, you can deny it all day long, hide and everything, but at the end of the day, it is a spiritual war, and one it can only be won by God, and if we're true to Him. And I'm glad you said that, and I know I've taught it before in times past, but I am going to bring up two things before I pray. One is that our live services, you are better to be on when we go live. Because after that, we block it to private. And the only way you can then see any of the videos is by providing for us your email at our email address. And that's the word AT Life at yahoo.com if you provide for us there your email we will not be selling it but this is the way we're going to allow you to go in and hear what we're saying and what we're teaching or what i'm teaching we're teaching whatever so keep in mind the best time for you to see what's going on is when we go live now we're broadcasting this on youtube and on youtube click the notification button subscribe etc so that when we do pop on like this you can then get online and see what's happening since we are in two different time zones it's a little more complicated uh, for julian and i to be on at the same time but we're going to do that as much as possible i'm a little bit more flexible than he is because he works nights so we want to try to keep you informed now, the other thing that I want to bring out very clearly and precisely is what is demonic possession? What does that mean? Now, we get the idea that it's exorcism by the Catholic Church, that it's all of these demonic visuals. And yes, it does have a lot to do with it. You know, Halloween, All Hallows Eve and Trick or Treat and all that stuff is coming up in just a matter of weeks. And you'll be giving yourself over to these demonic spirits. Now, remember, the scripture says to who we give ourselves over to, that's who we become the servants of. How do I know if my demonic, if a demonic, if you're demonic, however you want to put it, is possessing and controlling you? What is your thoughts about? You cannot be on these video games where there's murder and mayhem and destruction and bombs and all this without becoming desensitized. And you've got to think, where is your mind at? Is it on the party? Is it on getting high? Is it on making money? Is it about how to, to double cross someone, betray them? Where is your mind? You are the example and you are the one who controls what comes in here and what comes out there. So question what you're about. Think about what you've gotten yourself involved in. Now, many people in this world are very much involved in demonic activity and possession. When you start saying you don't see anything wrong with it, you're already possessed. You don't see anything wrong with shacking up. You're already away from God. For he tells you in his commandments not to do that. And you can't make excuse and think you're going to have a clear conscience 
by doing that. I know of a young man that had been in my life for approximately 30 plus years. And recently, he decided he was going to go out, find another woman, drink, have drugs, live his life up, leaving behind a wonderful wife, a tremendous daughter, all for his sheer enjoyment of living his life to his destruction. There's no excuse for that. We don't change partners after we've been together for these years. This, again, is a demonic thought. He got enticed by something that was in his heart, not keeping his mind and his heart pure. He began to involve himself in these other thoughts and activities and in the wrong uh, company of the wrong people. It's a sad situation that he's lost it. What's going to be worse is when it has lost everything and realized game over. You can't make anyone do anything. God gave us a free will. We have a choice. Naturally, my desire is for everyone to know who he really is and to embrace him and honor him in every aspect of your life. That's my desire. And I want that desperately for everyone who listens to what I'm saying. No, Julian, we're not promised tomorrow. But I do know that every breath I breathe, I'm going to do it honoring God. Right. And I have known you for many years, as we stated throughout many videos, and you are a true man of God. You're a man who loves God with everything in you. You love your family. You respect this ministry. And to that is a very rare quality. Very few men in this generation have that type of conviction. And that's when I really want us to thank God that we have great examples in front of us. People we can mentor our life after. Well, we're coming to a place that I think is the most critical part of this entire broadcast. And that's to pray that God strengthen, open our eyes and direct us back to him. We are not going to make it without his kindness and his righteousness. I do sincerely believe that the angels of God are round, camped round about those who love and serve him and keep his commandments. You walk out from under that covenant, you've lost it all. It's one thing to say, I didn't do that much wrong. But let me ask you this question. Is there a degree in sin? Is the murder and mayhem that's going on right now in Israel, is that any different than a man committing adultery? Are any met better different than a woman dressing as a man or all these different kinds of overtones of our society? Which sin is greater? There is no degree of sin. Sin is whatever separates you from God. When you violate his word, he steps back. He said he would do that. Countless scriptures over and over. He says, if you don't, I won't. If you do, I will. We need to understand the covenant position that we have if we keep him in the forefront of our mind. Well, in closing, think about the things we've talked about. As I said before, we will try desperately to keep you informed as frequently as possible. Share on the YouTube, like, subscribe, and keep in mind, I am providing scriptures that will eventually be expounded on just for those who perhaps don't like to read. Some of them are not very long, but we will expound on them as time progresses. Julian, I really appreciate you coming at the drop of a hat. <laughs> and although we had some technical difficulties getting started, uh, we'll get it down before it's all said and done. Yeah, we will. We'll get it down. It, it's like anything else we've taken on before. It's new, but we can yep. do it. So let's take this opportunity to call upon the name, the Holy One.
Dio sho hivi ono guriba ndale hasavormai mighty god hisi filo kuriba va i call upon your holy righteous name hivi ono riaba shade hebondo da riki di lore ma dei lord hasen belolo reach out among the multitude gather back your people hisi manala yota help us to humble ourselves and to pray and to seek your face lifting up holy hands to a righteous God Lord forgive us for coming short of what we knew to do right I know you will protect what is yours you said it over and over and over God let us be a part of what you want us to do stand for truth and righteousness and honor adonai every day of your life he be nun da ri fo samba he la ki andori hallelujah god thank you thank you hasamela kuribaba thank you lord hallelujah god bless and keep you let's honor him